A battalion of U.S. 1st Air Cavalry clashes with North Vietnamese regulars in the central coastal plain near Bong Son. Heavy and accurate sniper fire, zeroed in by telescopic sights, keeps our forces pinned down and dug in. On the Battle of Buffalo, which occurred July 2nd, 1967, outside of Cantien, while we were on a push towards the DMZ, we had 120 people in Bravo Company, and we were uh, attacked by a force that was estimated to be in the range of 900 North Vietnamese soldiers. And at the end of the day, uh, there were 15 survivors out of 120 men from Bravo Company. I was one of the 15 that survived. I had bartended for a long time at the Knights of Columbus on Thursday nights, and my clientele was World War II veterans who we became lifelong friends. And just got thinking how many of these guys have never been able to get down to Washington to see the World War II Memorial and the Korean War Memorial, and just uh, started bouncing around uh, how we could get them down there. Ladies, how are you? Nice to see you. So I got the idea that maybe we could send a busload of guys down and, and host them for a, for a long weekend so that they could really spend some time at the, at the monuments. Coming to this is, it's, it, it's sorrowful in a way, but it's like, it's very therapeutic. It's like, uh, so it's like, it, it does a lot more good than harm. I certainly had uh, a survivor's guilt for 30 plus years. You just feel so close to these people because these people that survived and that I served with, your life depended on, on their very existence. It's like you did everything to keep them alive and they basically did the same. I've heard the question a couple of times here about uh, how close could you get? And I said, uh, I said, when your life depends on, on the person's, you know, in the foxhole with you or next to you, I said, uh, you will never have a closer relationship with anyone in the world more than those men. It's like, it's, it, it's just an eternal bonding that, that will never be broken. It's like, um, It, so every time I come to, to, to the Vietnam Wall and, and or to Washington, it's like, uh, it's, it, it's always an emotional experience that uh, one cannot fathom how close. Um, and I see those names etched on the wall. It's, it, it, it's, it, it, it's, I have a feeling knowing that, and I'm a Christian, background and person and it's like I know that they went to a good place but it's just terrible knowing that these young men of 18, 19, 20 years old never got the opportunities that I've had in 75 years it's like so it's um, I come here with a heavy heart at times but I know that they were in a good place so I feel good about that We wanted to make sure that every World War II, every Korean War veteran, every Vietnam War veteran was able to get down and experience the monuments built in their honor. Uh, after our third trip, we literally have taken every Cayuga County World War II, Korean War, or Vietnam War veteran that we are aware of. Uh, everyone that has wanted to travel has traveled. It just seems like the natural time for, for this particular program to end as a success.
Did you smile for that one? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Sometimes when you when you don't have these things, it's like you tend to separate and you tend to not call people. You tend not to email them now. It's like so it, it's 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 like a cohesiveness that these these flights mean to veterans and it's like uh, if they could continue it would be a wonderful thing for the people that have never been on one because so many veterans that I've known over the years it's like if you don't push them and shove them a little bit to come to some of these things it's they stay isolated and it's like uh, for the most part over the years talking with a lot of people that have had PTSD problems and stuff, that's the worst thing that a veteran can do is isolate themselves. I can say it brought me great peace and happiness. I mean, we saw something, we saw a need. These guys are American heroes. They, they put their lives on the line for us. Our country built, tremendously beautiful and meaningful memorials. Uh, and they don't mean all that much if we don't get the guys down there to see them. Uh, so it brings me great happiness that we did this. The difference you see in, a, in some of these veterans when they leave Auburn on Friday and they come back on Sunday, uh, sometimes it seems like they're standing taller and smiling larger and uh, I think for the Vietnam guys, uh, a little appreciation late is better than no appreciation at all. And, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing how our country treated these, these men. And I think we're doing what we can to make up for that. Ann Greer is one of a kind. It's, it seems like every trip we have one veteran that just maybe shines a little differently than the other. They, every one of them is special to us and special to me. But uh, in 2017, we had Bob Strom, who kind of stole the show and uh, became Operation Enduring Gratitude royalty. And I think this time Ann Greer, uh, by nature of her being our first female participant and be just her force of will and good character and good cheer she took on that role she uh you know very strong military family going all the way back to world war one husband was a marine she was nominated to be marine spouse of the year in i believe 1970 so she's been to the commandant's house before that that we visited when we went to the evening parade she was a Marine herself, uh, stateside during the Korean War. And I think that she just exudes patriotism and optimism and, and uh, just loves our country. And we loved having her along with us. We're a little, we're a little sorry she didn't get enough attention.